400 sheep are being flown across Cook Strait from Blenheim Aerodrome to Paraparaumu. The sheep comprise Mr. R. G. McDonald's entire Southdown stud flock, which is to be offered at a fielding fair. This is the largest airlift of livestock in New Zealand. Two Dakota freighters are making 10 trips between both islands to complete the job. Going by air saves this valuable flock from possible damage in transit. The journey by plane takes 35 minutes, so that a few hours after leaving their home farm, they'll be grazing in paddocks at the fielding showgrounds. Mr. McDonald in the center watches his flock take the air. It's good weather for ducks, but they tell us it's better across the strait. At Paraparaumu, the first batch is unloaded into a waiting lorry and taken to Paikokariki, where they'll join the Goods Express for fielding. Meanwhile, loaded with general cargo, the plane set off back to the South Island for more sheep. Sharp-eyed cadets of Martin School are first in the Commonwealth to win the Earl Roberts Imperial Cadet Trophy for two years in succession. The trophy was handed over by Brigadier L.W. Andrews, VC, DSO, who said the team's winning score, 307 out of a possible 320, was also a Commonwealth record. Sponsored by the National Rifle Association of Great Britain, the shield is awarded annually, and New Zealand has won it seven times. This was a big day for Martin School. Not only had they broken two Commonwealth records, but an extensive modern block of infant classrooms was opened while the future occupants looked on. The building's attractive architecture led speakers to compare conditions of schooling, past and present. High above Willis Street, Wellington, painters are busy renovating the steeple of St. John's Church. Passers-by may get giddy just looking up there, but to these men it's just another job. This chap's going up, so let's join him and see how things look from way up there. Too late for regrets now. Is that the building shaking or is it our cameraman? This man seems happy enough about his work, even though he is on a narrow plank 160 feet above the ground. And why not? People have to look up to you in this job, and there are excellent prospects in all directions. At King's Wharf, heavy equipment for the new Otahu substation is about to be waterborne. This specially designed trailer usually hauls the equipment over land, but this time 75 tons might fracture sewers and canals under the Great South Road. So the journey is out of the Waitamata, up the Tamaki Estuary, into Otara Creek. There's a time limit, for the job can only be done on a spring tide. When the 45-ton stator is loaded on the trailer, the barge will be set to draw three feet at the bow and four feet at the stern. This allows for the sloping mud bank at the landing stage. The 15-mile journey begins. Launch Odin has the barge in tow. She's taking it as far as Panmure Bridge, where Launch Olivine is waiting to take over. Odin's draft is too great for the shallows. There's a cross current here. The barge is to drift under the bridge with the tide, Odin holding back a little to give steerage way. There's about three feet clearance on each side. Olivine continues the tow into the creek. As the barge nears the landing stage, the spring tide is full. The barge is winched in closer and the loaded trailer has now to be brought ashore. Scammell tank tractors are coupled up and the procession moves off along a specially constructed road leading to the new substation. A stator is one part of a synchronous condenser. The condenser's rotor, almost as big as the stator, comes up the creek on tomorrow's tide. 
There are three of these machines for the substation where they'll control voltage on transmission lines coming from the new generating station at Maraitai. For the first time, gramophone records for sale to the public are being made entirely in New Zealand. The first is the Ruru Karatiana Quintet playing the conductor's own composition, Blue Smoke. The sound from the microphones is blended in a mixing panel and, as an electrical impulse, passes onto a recording head which cuts an acetate disc. For some time, pressings have been made in New Zealand from imported master discs but this is the first record to be both cut and processed in this country, and it is, appropriately, a New Zealand composition played by local artists. Master record with a cut of blue smoke on one side and another item on the reverse is placed in a chemical bath and copper plated. After several hours in the bath, when the copper plating is the desired thickness, the master record is taken out and the copper discs or stampers prized off. Stampers, one for each side of the completed record, are then screwed into place in the platens of a hydraulic press, where they'll be used to stamp a thousand discs from shellac composition before being replaced. Patterns of the press are brought together at a pressure of 60 tons and a temperature of 280 degrees Fahrenheit. remains is to trim and polish the discs and pack them for dispatch to shops throughout the country. All tastes will be catered for as both classical and popular numbers are to be recorded. This new industry will conserve overseas funds and by bringing their work before the public will provide much needed encouragement to local composers and performers.